I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I'm talking with the founder of the Church Law Group. David Middlebrook is here to share some of his stories from the Christian battleground. And believe me, if anybody's got stories, it's it's this guy. So we'll see what we can get out of him. Thank you for being with me, Dave. Thank you so much for having me. Now, now you talk about the Christian battleground. And, and I don't know, what kind of names can you drop? I know that it tends to be sensitive, but just to give people a sense of who all you've worked for, you've worked for some major ministers. Well, um, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, uh, T.D. Jakes, uh, there's a whole bunch. Okay, so yeah. everything from handling just boring church things to uh, media and potential scandals, and, and we, we won't get too deep into that, but um, you handle it all. You know, we do. We, we, we like to think that um, we start really at the birth of organizations. We love representing church planning organizations, hundreds of church plants. It's the most exciting time in the life of a, uh, a new church is when God's birthed a vision and a mm -hmm. pastor. Mm -hmm. And so from that all the way to what people refer to as mega churches and mega ministry, yeah. uh, really the full spectrum of what's out there. What have, what have you learned? Maybe what uh, pastors should do or shouldn't do? You know, I think there's a lot of things that we see, unfortunately, recurring. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years this year, and and it's it's been an amazing, amazing ride. Um, being able to be what I talk about is like the ultimate backstage pass to ministry. I was a kid that teethed on the back of a church pew, yeah. and you know, generations of pastors in my family. Uh, what, and, what made you run away from? The, the, the faith. You've been talking to my lawyer. grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, really, all the way back to England, Vicar, Church of England, I would have been the sixth generation. And I, I watched this movie, To Kill a Mockingbird, believe it or not. Really? And I grew up watching, um, you know, Perry Mason and watching The Law, and I thought, this is a fascinating. I think some of the skills that I've observed would translate into another form, not knowing really that what I thought was rebellion, frankly, uh, in, in retrospect, was God's plan for my life. Hmm. Uh, my little grandmother used to say, no matter what I was telling her about, hey, I, I met Bishop T.D. Jakes, or I went and did this, or I heard that, or met so-and-so, and she'd say, make sure you write all that down, because when you become a pastor, you'll use that as a sermon <laughs> illustration. But, you know, what made me do it uh, was more of a, a need uh, that we saw and that there were things that were so avoidable and just like uh, we have all matured and we've seen how the world's gotten more complicated and more litigious so has the world of ministry mm -hmm. and you know there was a day when a kid fell on the church playground for example and it was an accident kid falls on the church playground the first thing that people do is they go well who can I sue mm -hmm. you know so there was a lot at work there not really realizing that Ultimately, what we were going to do was be able to hold up the, the arms of those that were called and to be their mighty men, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the most common thing people do that they could avoid some headaches if they had, had done it right the first time? Well, I think one thing that I see um, and I hear, and, and I'm honored, and I have to say my heart beats with pastors. I mean, I, I, that is, that's what I almost see myself as mm -hmm. in just kind of a strange way and being in ministry to pastors. And one of the things that I, I encounter a lot is pastors, they're alone, they're lonely, uh, they don't know what to do, they don't have any friends. Um, I, I sat with a pastor about three years ago who, I, I won't say his name, but I will tell you that he, there's no one really that has been any bigger or more effective than he. And he fell in a very dramatic way. And I found myself in a restaurant with him uh, a couple years back, and I just had a chance, and I said, can I ask you what happened? And he said, you know, I, I got isolated, I got alone, I didn't know what to do, and I fell. Hmm. And so one of the things I would say to pastors is make sure you have good friends, and, and I, don't mean, I don't mean Facebook friends, I mean true friends. And you don't mean sycophants, the, the yes men that, that too many pastors crowd themselves with, right? You know, suck-ups and sycophants... Uh, are just, it's a, it's a natural byproduct of being effective at what you do. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that are they're drawn to God's calling mm -hmm. because they don't know what God's calling is for their life. And I believe everybody has a calling and a purpose and a plan for their lives. And so, yeah, you have to be on guard about that. And you have to, I like, I was, uh, I was 
reflecting on this before I came here, and I like how Jesus did it. You know, nobody volunteered to be an apostle. Jesus chose them. Mm. Okay, so they were all chosen. Mm. So he had 12, and then he had an inner circle of four, and then he had the one he loved, the beloved John. Mm. So I, I look at that and go, that's probably a good model for us. If it was yeah. good for Jesus, is, is have 12, and then have your inner circle, and then have one. For me, that one is my law partner. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. My best friend is that guy. Mm. You know, and in, in the battlefield analogy, who are you going to call when you got to jump in a foxhole? Mm. Who do you know has your back? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and every pastor needs to have someone like that in their life mm. uh, that can stand with them and, you know, finishes their sentences for them. And, and I, I love being on the phone talking to pastors. I, you know, they'll say, oh, you're such a dear friend. And I'm like, I'm your lawyer. Yeah. You need a real friend. Yeah. And ministry is tough. I mean, ministry, people don't understand. You are a real friend, though. Come well, I know, but I mean, I, but, right. I, I, mean I, understand I, what I you're need, you need that friend that, that you know, you, you go fishing with and yeah. that knows you. But what does that say? Because the reality is because you're their lawyer, they know you are bound by certain confidentiality things, which means they're not afraid to share these things with you. But by saying that, they're saying, I've got no one else that I can share these things with. Are they not? Sometimes? They, they are. And I, I, I don't ever want anyone to listen to me today saying that I don't like that. I love being in the role of counselor. Right. right. And you're, it, it's much like going, you know, the, the scene in the movie where you go in and, and close the door and you're in the confessional with a priest. Yeah. Uh, when you're in there with your lawyer, they can tell me anything. Yeah. And they know that I'm not going to tell anyone about it. But that, that's a professional friendship. They, I'm talking about that right. genuine you know me, I know you, I'm okay, you're okay, we're not okay, we, but we got through this together. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody needs to have someone like that. Mm-hmm. Now, I would also say, when you think about it, Jesus chose, but within the choosing, there was Judas. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, uh, the hardest thing for a pastor to deal with is the betrayal that naturally comes. I, I don't know a single pastor that, that is being used mightily by God that can't rattle off example after example after example yeah. of betrayal. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, it happened to Jesus. Mm. So you have to be on guard as well. So, mm. Mm. Good stuff. If somebody wants to talk to you, I know you're not here to solicit business, but, I mean, you know. Hey, churchlawgroup.com. David at churchlawgroup.com. That's, that's, uh, that's what we're here for. Mm. And uh, I do know, and I'll mention this because I know it, that you at your website... Uh, you've got a lot of great resources for people who want, you know, the boring, what I call boring, legal stuff, uh, you know, on church plants, on copyright, something we've talked about, guides to all these legal things right. that will just, on a practical level, help any pastor in any church. So I would just just want to mention that, encourage people to, appreciate that. to get that. Because uh, you, you, you give away a lot of information uh, for free, I know. Absolutely. Uh, although, you, know, you got to pay the guy for a service, but... Um, so anyway, I appreciate the work you're doing. Go ahead. You, well, I was um, just but, saying, you know, it's an ounce of prevention. And it, it, we, I always say it, it's knowledge that builds the house. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you have knowledge, you can, you can have, and then wisdom that comes from the knowledge, then you, you're equipped to go about doing what is a very difficult thing, and that's to be a minister uh, in today's world. Mm-hmm. And you know that goes for all of us. Uh, you may not be a pastor, but if you're called by God, uh, really, you, you should live that same higher standard uh, and have the integrity that we expect from our Christian leaders. Uh, and so anyway, I appreciate your encouraging words and your insight and, uh, and the help that you're giving to a lot of pastors and a lot of great churches. Thank you so much, Randy.